welcome to this next episode of year in review we are already halfway through the mark and time has really flown by not just during the year but in this year in review series as well we've had an exciting first 11 episodes where i have largely looked at external stimuli and reflected upon them to see how the year has been for us for instance we looked at what google's year in search report had to say about what the world was looking at we also took a look at what merriam webster's word of the year was and similarly we all saw the mother of all events the fifa world cup if you have been following the pattern that i have been following for this year in review series over all these years since i started doing this in about 2016 or so a lot of the pointers draw inspiration from my life and particularly the life of my children as they have been growing up along these years this year is going to be no different so this one is dedicated to the students who are transitioning from high school to graduation or are approximately in that age bracket speaking about myself my son turned an adult this year and transitioned from school to college but this segment of the journey did not really start this year one of the most significant events that had an impact on schooling and pretty much everything in society happened 2 years ago which was obviously the pandemic which led to remote schooling and online education and that was a game changer it was a great compromise formula because at least the education did not come to a halt but the students and their parents figured out where they stand only once they were tested against the competition and this year it happened for the batch that was giving the competitive entrance exam or the various graduation entrance examinations a couple of key takeaways emerged from this experience first and foremost particularly in the case of science and math sort of subjects the curriculum is designed in such a way that one building block leads to another if you do not have the knowledge of a certain topic or subject which is a prerequisite and is taught in the earlier grades then you find it very difficult to cope with the subjects or the advanced topics in the subsequent or the higher grade classes and not to mention you would be completely at sea if you are dealing with competitive exams however this is not specific only to people who have been giving these competitive exams the much dreaded je mains or je advanced or other such competitive exams from the medical arena this is applicable to each and every learner on the planet whether you are a fifth grader or a second grader or somebody who's transitioning from school to college the fact remains that many of these building blocks which were required to have been built in over these last 2 years have not been built how is the system reacting to this in my experience most people are rushing on and wanting to catch up for the lost time they want to complete the syllabus as quickly as they can so that they can move ahead and make up for the lost time however if you are a student a parent or anyway connected to the education ecosystem particularly the primary secondary or senior secondary ones please do bear in mind that life and learning does not work like that If you've ever played that game Zenga, you know what I'm talking about. If you try and disturb the apple cart at the top without making sure the foundation or the base is solid and robust, you know what is going to happen. Everything will just come crumbling down. And that is unfortunately the precarious situation in which we have placed our children. It's not our fault that the pandemic happened, that the online education happened, that remote schooling happened and the students were not able to focus or willfully they were playing games on the sidelines or they were just distracted the fact of the matter is that most of the students did not switch on their cameras despite the continuous pestering of the teachers the reminders by the teachers the complaints to the parents at least based on my anecdotal evidence the internal grading that happened at school level was lenient because the schools and the teachers did take a sympathetic stand that has helped people move from one grade to another with reasonably looking grades but will it compensate for the lack of foundational skills will it compensate for those building blocks the answer is clearly in the negative so what does one need to do as we step into the next year the clear takeaway is that instead of trying to rush through everything and make up for the lost time one needs to take a slightly different approach something that may not even be part of the school curriculum or the pedagogy because these sort of situations have never existed until now so nobody has had the need for example for a class 8 student to go and test him or her on class 6 concepts 
But doing that is especially important because if you're struggling with a topic in class 8, the chances are that your issues are not residing in how that topic was covered in your class while you were in grade 8 today. The answer probably lies in what happened in 2020 and 21 during the pandemic when those foundational building blocks were being covered in class even though it was in an online medium but your attention was elsewhere. And as we've seen from the last episode, we need to ensure that our time and attention is well directed. Before we move on to the next segment of this discussion, we must take a moment and express our gratitude and indeed salute to all the teachers who have been relentless in their pursuit of getting students to study and to learn and most importantly to just be available online while the school is going on. It has certainly not been easy. Imagine speaking to a blank screen where students are not even switching on their cameras, where they are not even responding despite the teachers calling them out by name. It has absolutely been an harrowing experience and totally thankless job, which normally the teaching profession is in a country like India at least. But I think this, this one takes the cake. The second point that I would like to cover from my experiences is again something that not just happened this year but has been happening right through the last few years and that is about the entire test prep market or these coaching classes which prepare you to crack the competitive exams and as we all know because of the huge imbalance between supply and demand with lakhs of students appearing for these entrance exams which only has a few thousand seats and more than half of which fall under the reservation category we all know that the demand supply situation is completely lopsided. What this has resulted in is mushrooming of these centers which help you prepare to crack and compete at these insanely competitive exams. You might feel that there is nothing wrong with it. Ultimately, it is for the benefit of the students so they get a better opportunity. There is no doubt that this is a great service to meritorious students who are able to crack these exams and move forward in life as a result of these sort of interventions. But is that true in all cases? Is that true even in most of the cases? Is it true even for the most talented and meritorious students who have been successful and have managed to get a coveted seat in the top engineering or medical or law colleges of the country? The answer to my mind is a clear and resounding no. You might be wondering why I said that. The answer to me is obvious. Allow me to explain with the help of an example that I know really well. And of course, I am speaking about my son here. I have personally taken a lot of inspiration from my son as he got interested in programming when he was in grade 5. That is when I had to challenge myself and learn new things so that I was able to learn along with him or teach him. And this resulted in a flywheel effect where both our capabilities and skills increased manifold. I discovered a new side of me and it was an enthralling experience to see a child blossom and fall so much in love with technology, get creative, create new things which even adults could not think of and find new applications for tools and technologies that we otherwise see in our day-to-day -day lives. This journey continued for a few years from about grade 5 to grade 8 and it was a roller coaster ride of learning new things, new skills and I enjoyed the journey as much sitting on the sidelines watching him learn as much as I learned things for my own sake and was able to use those skills at work. But that is a story for another time. The universal takeaway here is that at that age, a child is creative and if you expose the child to learning opportunities, to experiential learning, to project-based learning and do anything but engage the children in rote learning, then you will find them blossom. They always have that creativity which is innate to them. They have that curiosity which is inborn. It cannot be taken away. However, the only thing which can take it away is this thrust of rote education or this pressure of cracking the competitive exams and knowing exactly what patterns of questions are asked, understanding those patterns and being able to apply your knowledge to those patterns. That is a very restrictive and convergent way of thinking. No doubt you are able to accomplish what you wanted to do in the short run. But what kind of skills does it help you build for the long run? Apart from the ability to crack competitive exams under pressure, to do more rote learning or memorize facts, theory, knowledge, information, etc. which may not be of any relevance because it is anyway available at your fingertips, courtesy Google 
and these days available at your voice command you really do not need to keep all of those things in your head what you need to use your gray matter for is for divergent thinking to apply the knowledge that you already have or that is available in the universe out there to real life projects to real life applications to be able to create building blocks by your own imagination by your own conceptualization to be able to develop life skills that will help you in life now a question here to the parents irrespective of the profession that you are in or the career that you are pursuing i just ask you one thing can you name three things which you did at your school level or even at your graduation level which has today helped you immensely in the pursuit of your professional goals or your career goals or shaped you in becoming the person that you are today the answer does not need much thinking i can visualize all of you immediately nodding your heads in the negative and saying no we cannot even recall one forget about three so if that is the case if this is how life panned out for you why subject the same torture to the next generation allow them to discover themselves allow them to be creative allow them to experiment and give them a channel so that their curiosity can be funneled and they can explore new things and new worlds so let's move on from bashing the entire ecosystem of test preparation to the agency which conducts these tests or examinations for those who are in this ecosystem you will not take more than a second to guess that i am talking about the infamous nta or the national testing agency which is responsible for conducting most of these competitive exams the most prominent ones being je mains and in the recent past the cuet as a parent i can tell you the experience that the children have been through by the sheer mismanagement of the nta is harrowing to say the least i don't think there is much that can be done about it there were allegations of corruption there were allegations of mishandling dates were changed at the last minute the technology did not seem to work somehow you name anything which could have gone wrong and it went wrong not to say that it impact each and every one of the lakhs of students most students were still unaffected at least unaffected directly but it did play on the minds of people since this was happening around them and as we know human nature if something incorrect is happening if something negative or wrong is happening to someone we tend to make it viral we tend to cascade the communication thereof and because of that availability effect we tend to believe that these negatives are more frequent than they actually are i am not sure if there is anything controllable in your hands here if you can do anything to fix the nta i am sure if you can then a lot of people will be thankful to you but if you can't there is one thing that you can do if you or your child is going to be in that boat in the coming future the one thing that you can do is to be mentally prepared be ready for the worst and be hopeful for the best the other thing that i realized from my experience of seeing my son take these competitive exams is the proliferation of content around many of these episodes on youtube and on social media and on the internet in general what this has resulted in is amplifying and propagating all of these negative things which are largely uncontrollable in your hands and this does no good to you the only people it benefits are these so called content creators who are creating viral content with clickbait thumbnails so that you can click on it and waste your time instead of focusing on what you need to do i am not saying that there aren't good people who create value adding stuff who are going out of the way to provide information quality education quality content for free on the internet so by all means identify those people but sometimes even they end up creating these episodes just to get more views or just because it is the need or the demand or i should say the perceived need or the perceived demand of the student community so please do not waste your time in such things and be mentally prepared ensure that your mental conditioning is such that you are able to cut out all the noise and only focus on the signal which is doing what is controllable in your hands let's move on to the third point which is around the complexity speaking from my own experience i can tell you that we were not prepared for this level of complexity we knew that there are several exams that need to be given because most of the institutes have their own examinations but what we were not prepared for is the sheer volume of complexity that it would result in even if we are talking about five or six agencies conducting their own examinations it results in a multiplier effect in terms of complexity 
they may have different syllables they may have different admission procedures they may have different prerequisites there are multiple colleges associated with each and every examination the counseling process is not integrated with the examination process so for each one of these instances you have to go through a separate examination process and you have to go through a separate counseling process not only that there may be multiple counseling processes or threads of processes depending on the institute which may be relying on the same examination score but may not be part of the same counseling process to make matters worse you have this issue of location selection of stream selection which stream should one go to which location which college through which channel some colleges have multiple options available which are so confusing that even to explain that they take hours and hours just to do webinars to explain what the process is all about so to cut a long story short do take into account that there is a massive amount of complexity and you have to budget for a lot of time going into all of these administrative things and as if these human factors were not enough this year we had mother nature playing its part too for instance during this year's examinations we had a severe heat wave in northern india as you can see from this the temperature was 47 degrees centigrade when we went to pick up my son from his examinations so those are the kind of challenges that the students had to contend with once again if you are a parent or an educator or otherwise engaging with the students in any way please do realize that they have to indeed go through a lot if you've completed your education 10 20 30 years ago i think you will find it difficult to relate to what the students have to go through these days what you will also be able to relate is that if you look at the span of your life and you do have a lot of experience post your education then you will realize one thing what you are doing right now is zooming in to a very small and narrow segment of the life of a person which is their student life their grades their ability to crack the competitive exams get admission into a prestigious institute however if you look at yourself and how your life has panned out over these years what you are essentially doing is zooming out of that one singular episode which was maybe your class 12th or a competitive exam or a graduation exam or some other such inconsequential thing in life because that is exactly what these things are completely inconsequential to the way your life panned out to be and you know this because you have that experience of panning through your entire life and not just being stuck to one narrow episode where you have zoomed in so if life turned out to be fine for you and you realize that only when you zoom out and pan through the entire course of your life why is it going to be any different for the poor kid out there do not keep your focus so narrow that you are missing the woods for the trees what we need to remember is that when a door closes people become more eager to and when they do that and if they do that persistently and in the right manner the chances are much greater that they will open and unlock a door which opens up to a world of much greater possibilities if you look back at your life maybe this is exactly what has happened to you allow this process of exploration and discovery to happen organically and naturally to the students as well the options in your time were probably much more limited but the options today are much more diverse because the world has changed a lot it has become more multifaceted more diverse there are more career opportunities or more kinds of career opportunities than there were ever before so on that note of exploration as this video is ending whether you are a student a parent or anybody else feel free to explore and discover more do check out the other videos in this playlist in the year in review series the links as always are there in the description below and before you go do not forget to like and share this video subscribe to this channel and most importantly leave your comments behind on what your experience has been whether as a student or as a parent or as somebody who's just observing things in society so with that i will see you in the next episode